All right, in this video, I want to talk about dividing radical expressions. We'll also get into rationalizing the denominator. All right, so let's begin with a note. All right, so we have the nth root of a fraction, which uh, can be written as the nth root of the numerator over the nth root of the denominator. And since roots are fractional exponents, uh, the properties of exponents um, are what make this property true. All right, the other thing we want to remember is when simplifying radicals, uh, for a radical to be simplified, then the radicand should not contain any fractions. And a radical should not be in the denominator. So that's just some other things to keep in mind for what the formal definition of a um, simplified uh, radical expression is supposed to be like. All right, so here we go. All right, so we want to simplify the square root of 3 halves. All right, first thing we notice is that there's a fraction under the radical, under the square root sign. Um, officially, that's not in simplified form. So uh, to um, stick with the current convention, uh, we, we will try to rewrite this a different way. All right, so we make note that we can rewrite this as the square root of 3 over the square root of 2. And the square root of 3 is just the square root of 3, and the square root of 2 is just the square root of 2, and so forth. And then also part of that convention of simplifying radicals is no radicals should be in the denominator of a fraction. That just makes it easier to add and subtract fractions later if you don't have any um, radicals in the denominator. All right, so we look at the square root of 3 over the square root of 2, and we notice that we have a square root in the denominator. So there's this process called rationalizing the denominator. Okay, rationalizing the denominator. And what that means is making the denominator not have any radicals in it. And what that means is that the denominator becomes a rational number, hence the phrase rationalize the denominator. All right, so to do that, uh, we look at the denominator and the root. We say, oh, we have the square root of 2. All right, so we know that we can multiply a fraction by pretty much anything we want as long as we multiply it to the top and the bottom of that fraction, right? So that's the idea. Now we can't multiply top and bottom by zero, but just about everything else is okay. So we're going to choose wisely. We want to multiply the square root of 2 times something so that when they multiply together, you do not have any square roots left over, right? Well, the easy way to do that is just to multiply the square root of 2 by itself. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2. Now if you multiply the denominator by the square root of 2, you must multiply the numerator by the square root of 2 because this is a fancy way to write the number 1. And 1 times this fraction over here in blue does not change the value of the fraction there in blue. All right, so now we just multiply from the previous video, just multiply radicals. The so square root of 3 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 6. Square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is 2. And now we do not have any radicals in the denominator. Square root of 6 does not simplify down any farther, and so that's just as far as we can rewrite this. So the square root of 3 over 2 simplifies down to the square root of 6 over 2. Really simplifies kind of a sorry word. It's really that we have rewritten the square root of 3 halves to be the square root of 6 divided by 2. It's just rewritten in a different form. All right? Let's try another one. All right, let's try the square root of 2 45ths. All right, so again, 2 45ths is a fraction, so let's see if we can separate this up to the square root of 2 over the square root of 45. And we say the square root of 2 is the square root of 2, but the square root of 45 we could rewrite as the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. Everybody agree with that? And then we say, all right, we have the square root of 2 over 3 times the square root of 5. All right? Say, so, all right, well, we still have a square root in the denominator, so we need to multiply the top and bottom of the numerator by something to rationalize the denominator. Well, since it's the square root of 5, we can just multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 5. When it's a square root, it's, the easiest thing to do is just multiply it by, um, by itself, right? Because this is going to give us... In the numerator, we're going to get the square root of 10. Square root of 2 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 10. The denominator, we're going to get 3 times the square root of 25. Everybody see that? So square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 25. Then we go, well, we have the square root of 10 over 3 times 5. And that's just the square root of 10 over 15. So we, we have taken the square root of 2 45ths and rewritten it as, as the square root of 10 
over 15. And sometimes it's easier to, to mess with the square root of 10 over 15 than it is to mess with the square root of 2 45ths. That's the only reason we're walking through this process is to understand how to rewrite um, our radicals in a different form because uh, it may be easier to play with them in that other form. All right, so let's try, let's try another one. All right, so with cube roots, now we've got a cube root in the denominator. Uh, with square roots, you just multiply the top and bottom by the same square root, right? Because the square root um, of a number times its the square root of the same number gives you a gives you a square root of a perfect square, and that's what eliminates the square root. But with cube roots, you have to think about it a little bit more carefully, right? We want to multiply the cube root of three times something, so that we will get the cube root of a perfect cube in the end. Right? So the question is, what do you have to multiply the 3 by to make it a perfect cube? Well, you need to know your perfect cubes, right? So we notice that the um, first perfect cube is 8. Well, 3 times something is not going to give us 8. The next one is 27. Well, 3 times what gives you 27? 9, right? So we can multiply the denominator here by the cube root of 9. Yes, you need the cube root, or it's understood to be a square root, and that would not... Uh, you would not be able to do that here, right? That would not give you that would not get you to what you want. If you multiply the denominator by the cube root of nine, then you have to multiply the numerator by the cube root of nine, and then you just multiply straight across. We get two times the cube root of nine all over the cube root of three times the cube root of nine is the cube root of twenty-seven, right? And two times the cube root of nine, the cube root of twenty-seven is just three. So now we have rewritten 2 over the cube root of 3 to be 2 times the cube root of 9 divided by 3. All right, and again, it might be easier to play with this because you don't have any radicals in the denominator. All right, so that's the, that's the idea with cube roots or fourth roots or fifth roots. You have to be a little more careful about what you're going to multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction by in order to rationalize the denominator. All right, let's try, let's try this one. All right, 3 over the cube root of a squared. All right, so again, the question is, what do we need to multiply the cube root of a squared by so that we get a perfect cube? Well, a cubed would be a perfect cube, right? So what do we need to multiply a squared by to get a cubed? Well, I need to multiply by a. So we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by the cube root of a. All right, see that? Right, because then the, the uh, numerator is going to go to 3 times the cube root of a all over the cube root of a cubed. And the cube root of a cubed goes to just a. And so that's it. All right? And again, we rationalize the denominator. This whole process is called rationalizing the denominator. All right, so now I want to introduce a new word. It's called conjugates. All right, so conjugates occur with binomials. All right, so these two things right here are called conjugates. Notice that the first term in each part is the same and the last term is the same, but one's got a minus in between and the other one's got a plus in between. In general, conjugates are the following. If you've got a plus b, then its conjugate would be a minus b. Are you with me? Right? If you've got x minus y, then its conjugate would be x plus y. Right? Everything stays the same except the signs in the middle. One's plus and one's minus. And this is only, only for binomials. Right? So that's the idea on conjugates. Now what happens when you multiply two conjugates together. Say like 4 minus the square root of 3 and 4 plus the square root of 3. Let's multiply those together and we get 4 times 4 which is 16 plus 4 square root of 3 minus 4 square root of 3 minus the square root of 9. So that goes to 16. Notice the 4 square roots of 3 go away and you're left with 16 minus 3 because the square root of 9 is 3. So all of this goes down to just the number 13. Right, everybody see that? All right, so that's kind of nice because there's not any, there aren't any square roots in it, right? That's that's kind of cool. So that's going to come in handy later when we have uh, binomials with radicals uh, in the denominator of a fraction, right? 
Uh, and it doesn't matter you know, if it even looks like, say, this, the square root of x plus 3 times the square root of x minus 3. When you multiply this out, you're going to get the square root of x squared minus 3 square root of x plus 3 square root of x minus 9. Square root of x squared is just x. The stuff in the middle will always disappear. With conjugates, they'll always disappear, right? Because one will be positive and one will be negative. That all goes to 0, and so you're just left with x minus 9. All right, so for this bottom one down here. All right, so conjugates. Uh, we're going to use them here to rationalize the denominator, but they're used for other things later on. Uh, so uh, you will see that word again. All right, so here we go. All right, simplify. Square root of 2 over the square root of 5 minus 1. Now, we cannot just multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 5 uh, to rationalize the denominator because you would have to distribute that square root of 5 through both the square root of 5 and the negative 1 down here on the bottom, and you would still have a square root in the denominator. That's the point, right? All right, so since you have a binomial in the denominator, the way to rationalize the denominator is to multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. Right, so the conjugate of the denominator is the square root of 5 plus 1. Well, if you do that to the bottom, you need to do that to the top. All right, so in the numerator up here, we have the square root of 2 times the square root of 5 plus 1. All right, in the denominator, we multiply these two conjugates together. We get the square root of 5 times the square root of 5, which is the square root of 25. The square root of 5 times 1 is plus the square root of 5, and then minus the square root of 5, because you got negative 1 times the square root of 5, and then minus 1. Everybody see that? All right. And then uh, in the numerator, you could distribute that square root of 2 through if you want and get the square root of 10 plus the square root of 2. There's nothing wrong with that. And in the denominator, you're going to get 5 minus 1. So all of this goes to the square root of 10 plus the square root of 2 over 4. And that is the new form that we have rewritten our fraction in. All right, square root of 10 plus the square root of 2 all over 4. All right, one more. All right, so the square root of 3 over the square root of 3 plus 2. Again, since it's a binomial in the denominator, we need to multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate. All right, and so that gives us... I'm going to distribute it through. So we have the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which is the square root of 9, minus 2 square roots of 3, all over square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is going to give us the square root of 9. Square root of 3 times negative 2 is negative 2 square roots of 3, and 2 times the square root of 3 is positive square roots of 3, so that stuff in the middle disappears, and we're left with square root of 9 minus 4. Everybody see that? So I, I left out a step or two here. I left out these two parts up here that we did um, in problem five. Right? I left that part out when you multiplied it, those two things together. All right, so now we have the square root of 9, which goes to 3, minus 2 square roots of 3, all over square root of 9 is 3 again, so 3 minus 4 in the denominator. All right, we see that that goes to 3 minus 2 square roots of 3, all over 3 minus 4 is negative 1. All right, so but we don't want to leave the negative one in the denominator, so we can multiply the top and bottom by the uh, by a negative one, and that's going to leave us negative three plus two square roots of three, and that's a better way to write it. All right, we made the one positive in the denominator by multiplying the numerator and the denominator of this fraction by negative one, and so that gives you a positive one in the denominator, which we do not have to write, and then distribute the negative one through the numerator to give you a negative three plus two radical three. All right, so when we're rationalizing the denominator and we have a binomial in the denominator, then you're going to need to multiply the top and the bottom by, of the fraction by the conjugate of the denominator. So that's it. Study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.